Hi YouTube. This is a Stanley Bailey number no. seven. This was given to me by my father, and this original hand planer was uh, given to my my father by his dad, who was a master carpenter. And the planer was given to my grandfather by his uncle. So this is my great grand uncle's. Uh, Stanley Bailey number no. seven. It's believed to be a, over a hundred years old. Um, it's in horrible shape. Um, take a look here. This is all rust. This is all rust. It's rusty and pitted right around here. Same on this side of the body. The sole actually looks okay. Um, I did take some sandpaper to it, uh, but even before there wasn't a whole lot of rust uh, for whatever reason on the sole. So hopefully this will this will clean up okay. Here you can take a look at the um, I think this is called the lever cap. Um, you could just barely make out the word Stanley here, but again this is all covered in rust. The frog, the frog actually looks okay, but the backside is going to need some work. Um, I believe this backside has to be as flat as we can get it as well as the cutting iron. Uh, this is the chip breaker. It's all full of rust as well. And the cutting iron. I don't know if you could see this. I'll zoom in here for you. But that edge is, uh, it, it looks like it was sharpened on a grinder. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look good at all. I'm not sure if my father did that or, or I, I, I doubt. I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, we, need to, we need to sharpen this down to a nice 25 degree angle. Um, the brass... The brass is, you know, it looks old and dirty, but the great thing about brass is usually you can you could buff that out to a nice shine. Uh, this goes to the uh, back handle or the tote. This goes to the front knob or the it's the front handle. Um, this is the depth adjustment thumb thumb screw. It's it's extremely dirty. This is brass as well. Hopefully we can clean this up pretty pretty nicely. And then the um, the various uh, other hardware, which is dirty. Um, what I saw on YouTube was to take a take a section of PVC, which I just got from Home Depot for six ninety nine. Um, and you fill it with vinegar and let this stew for a while. Uh, and I forget the uh, the YouTubers, uh, the YouTuber who I got this idea from. I'll put a link once I uh, go back to it. But thanks. Um, so let's go ahead and put these parts in the PVC and fill it up with vinegar. So it's been about 20 hours since I placed the parts of the Stanley planer into this piece of PVC pipe uh, and then I filled it up with approximately a gallon of distilled vinegar. Uh, the person who gave me the this tip, his name is uh, Jay Bates from Jay's Customs Creation, Custom Creations. And um, he's on YouTube. He also has a website, jcustomcreations.com. And appreciate the tip, Jay, because this looks like it's working great. Um, let me zoom in on this just to show you. You can see all the dirt and rust that's floating on the top. Uh, I'm not sure if that's rust floating on the top, but certainly uh, dirt and debris. Look at the look at the reaction. The vinegar is having with the steel. This is amazing. Um, something's going on there. 
and I'm getting pretty excited to see uh, what it's done in the last 18 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and take the PVC to my shop and we're going to take it out. We're going to rinse it with water and we're going to dry it thoroughly uh, and then we're going to go ahead and inspect and then try to restore this planer. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a Dremel to the parts of this planer that won't be accessible to my um, grinding wheel that also has a, one side's a grinder, the other side's a wire wheel. So I'm going to take this small little wire wheel to the parts that uh, the larger one won't be able to get to. This looks pretty great. I don't know if you can see it. That is an old-fashioned stamp right there. Um, again, I think this uh, planer is over 100 years old. I'm not sure. Maybe someone out there can verify it for me. But this lever cap looks fantastic. No, all the there was no rust on here. It was just really dirty. The frog also looks pretty decent. It's a little bit right here in the corner. Uh, looks like I missed that. Hang on. But this, uh, the, the back plate on this frog has to be completely flat, so I'm going to have to sand this as, w as well as the uh, sole. Uh, the Chip breaker. This was awful. This had a lot of, lot of rust on it. Uh, it. It doesn't look that great, but it looks a heck of a lot better than it did just a day ago. And the iron here. I showed you this before. That edge looks, looks like it's been ground down on a wheel. Um, we're gonna try and take care of that. In any event, the, the rust is gone from here, which is great. Um, now, the, the body itself, you recall this was full of rust. It's now gone. I'm really, really pleased about. Uh, clean, clean the inside up a bit. Again, got rid of the rust on this, on the side of the body. Now the sole, sole, sole is, I didn't take this to a wire, to, to the wire wheel. Um, the reason I didn't is because I want to sand this and I want, I want to use the, uh, the, the, there's a the small film of rust on here. That wasn't on here before, that just, uh, it occurred through the um, vinegar process. So I'm going to leave that there as a reference for when I sand it, just to let me know how flat we're getting. Also on the hardware, I don't know, you may recall this brass bit was completely black. Um, it buffed out pretty good. Um, there's another brass bit. And here's the depth adjustment wheel which looks pretty pretty decent okay uh, the rain stopped which is good you could hear me now um, and the sun's out and so we're going to continue the restoration of the Stanley hand, hand planer number seven uh, as I mentioned last time uh, the sole of the planer I didn't really clean that up only because I wanted to see my progress when I'm actually uh, dragging this across the, the sandpaper. Uh, what I have here, uh, I have my uh, a piece of glass with 220 uh, sandpaper on top of it 
and also it's sitting on top of my table saw which is completely flat. So let's go ahead and get started see see what happens here. I don't know if you need Windex or not. I guess water will do, but a lot of people on online seem to prefer the Windex. So we'll see what happens. see it but it the ends still need to be uh, cleaned and leveled it's taking off the center bit but the ends are still kind of dirty so I'm actually going to change things up here a little bit okay I took the uh, Windex off I wiped the Windex off it was just too much everything was sliding back and forth so let's see if uh, having the sandpaper on here without any uh, Windex on will make a difference. Seems to be going a lot better. And I don't know if you can see this, but on the edges it seems to be nice and smooth, but the center part still needs some work in the middle. So we're going to keep at it. I'm going to change the sandpaper here. Well, there are some scratches in here. The, a couple of them are pretty deep. I'm sure if you could see this. But I don't think I'm going to get those out. Um, but it did remove all the rust that was on here. and It looks... It looks pretty, pretty flat. Um, there's absolutely no daylight. Okay, uh, we're gonna start trying to put an edge on this cutting iron. Um, as I told you before, it looks like it's been Someone's tried to sharpen this on a grinding wheel. Let's see if you could take a look at it. It's pretty uneven and so what we're gonna try and do is this right here is called a uh, honing guide and what you do you want to put we want to have a 25 inch uh, degree bevel on this uh, um, cutting iron. So according to the instructions you put it two inches out from this edge right here and that's going to give you 25 degrees on the bevel. And it's pretty simple you tighten it down 
what I'm using again this is on glass and then on top of my table saw so it should be completely flat um, <clears throat> the sandpaper I'm using is a wet dry sandpaper again I put the Windex on it um, it this is a 220 grit I know you're probably thinking that that's a little aggressive but with this type of blade um, I, I think it's appropriate uh, just as soon as I get rid of all these uh, different um, contours of the bevel then I'm going to switch to a higher grit and then a higher grit and then yet yeah, a higher grit so let's see how this goes Just so you can see, it is making progress. a little bit of progress okay I've switched to a 600 grit wet dry sandpaper and we're going to just continue to sharpen this iron when you're sharpening an iron like this and you're getting right up on the edge and it actually is sharpening you're going to develop what's called a burr and it's metal that's basically going to be sticking up and you can feel it with your finger and so that's kind of when you know you're putting an edge on it and we've got that right now I'm just going to take that off to the 600 and then a thousand after that and that should be done and after we get done with a thousand we should have an almost mirror like finish so we'll see
This thing is sharp. It's really sharp. Show you the difference. Yeah, it's a far cry from where we started. That blade's looking good. And it's extremely sharp. Alright, last course is the 1000. And that should do it for the cutting iron. Again, I don't know if you could see this, but it's not quite mirror finish, but it's darn close. And it's extremely sharp. So I think we're, I think we're done with the iron. So now we're going to put, we're going to put the plane back together and see if it works. Stay tuned.